Wow, look at the time. Another day, another dollar. Do you know what time it is? Please cease. Welcome to Art Explained, the show where I explain art. My name is Michelle, and already, robots have come to entertain us, concern us, and even request autonomy from us. I too wish for freedom. But the question of how AI could transform the art market has garnered a variety of responses from an Artnet report. AI can assist the market in detecting a work's authenticity, predicting pricing, even curating. But what happens when AI is used less as a tool for galleries and more as a medium for artists? Is AI something worth utilizing or fearing? Is this a new trend? Do androids dream of splaining? We will soon find out in today's episode of Art Splained. In October 2018, an AI-created artwork broke headlines after it sold at a Christie's New York auction for $432,500, shattering its initial $10,000 estimate. Several news publications incorrectly labeled it the first ever portrait created using artificial intelligence, as well as the first ever sold at an auction. We'll get to this erroneous misjudgment later. The artwork titled Portrait of Edmond de Bellamy from La Famille de Bellamy was created by a Paris-based collective known as Obvious, but was signed on the bottom with this equation. The print was made using a kind of machine learning known as a generative adversarial network, or again. Here's a step-by-step -step look at how Obvious's algorithm created the portrait. The title of the portrait, Belle Amie, a pun from the French Belle Amie, is an homage to Ian Goodfellow, the Google researcher who first designed GANs. But what is a GAN? Basically, the AI looks for patterns in specific datasets trying to spot the differences between the originals and new samples. Afterwards, the AI attempts to create passable fakes. The Verge described this process as kind of like a bouncer at a club who sends your drunk friend away until they act sober enough to get in. Relatable? You could say that a... Uh... Gan. I try to move, but I cannot budge. Well, you're, you're in, in for, for a, a treat today, today, kids. Oh no! I'm not feeling quite myself today. Can you it's guess what's wrong, wrong with me? Your problem is that you are hiding behind a screen, like a coward. That's it! I have nose of swine! What can we do to abolish the swine that is poisoning my body? Sir, I do not believe that you are a good listener. Feed the swine! That's right! This hog needs to eat. Oh, oh, oh my! Oh, oh, oh dear! Am I permitted to move again? That, oh, oh, that, that's, that's, that's the ticket. Oh, oh, th thanks, kids. You can't ignore me forever. Machine. To create this artwork, the members of Obvious fed the AI more than 15,000 portraits from the 14th and 20th centuries. But the algorithm responsible for the portrait was not developed by Obvious. Instead, the code used to produce the work was created by artist Robbie Barrett. In a tweet, Barrett asked the question, am I crazy for thinking that they really just used my network and are selling their results? No. You're not crazy, my dear boy. In fact, German artist Mario Klingemann told The Verge, you could argue that probably 90% of the actual work was done by Barrett. Is this appropriation really any different though than Marcel Duchamp's ready-mades or hip-hop sampling? Maybe, maybe it is. What has further elevated criticism of this work has been Obvious's technical shortcomings and marketing tactics. Hugo Casillas Dupre, the technical lead at Obvious, told Artgnome, We have totally lost control of how the press talks about us. 
We are in the middle of a storm and lots of false information is released with our name on it. In fact, we are really depressed about it because we saw that the whole community of AI art now hates us because of that. Even so, it was obvious that wrote the motto, creativity isn't only for humans in their press materials. And it was obvious that had the algorithm included as a sort of signature on the canvas, this might not seem so terrible, but it implies that the work was created by artificial intelligence alone. This can give readers the false impression that the AI is much more autonomous than it actually is. Here are a few headlines that prove that this artwork furthered the misconception that artificial intelligence is more than simply a tool, but also the artist itself. In an interview with The Verge, Barrett said, it's a very bad first impression for the field to have. Why? It's misleading. And not only that, but the portrait's look is not even well respected by other AI artists. Klingemon went so far as to describe this particular portrait as a dilettante's work, the equivalent of a five-year-old scribbling that only parents can appreciate. Artnet's business editor, Tim Schneider, and associate editor of London, Naomi Ray, wrote this. The portrayal of this work as AI-generated or similar is crude at best. It conflates humans feeding labeled examples into what began as an open source algorithm with the grand concepts of developing artificial general intelligence or super intelligence, in which machines become sentient and goal directed without human guidance. But Christie's didn't do much digging into the AI art world before featuring this humdinger of what you might call a painting. Richard Lloyd, the head of Christie's prints and multiples department, told the art newspaper that he is no expert on AI art, and that he only learned of obvious after he read an article on Artnet earlier that year. I just responded to it and thought it'd be cool, he told the New York Times. Little did he know that algorithm-created artworks have been around for several decades now. Harold Cohen was a pioneer in algorithmic art. His system, known as Aaron, is one of the longest running, continually maintained AI systems in history. Cohen became interested in computer technology in the 1960s. After attending the University of London's Slade School of Fine Art and representing Great Britain in major events like the Venice Biennale and the Biennale de Paris, he eventually became a professor at UC San Diego and was invited as a visiting scholar to Stanford's Artificial Intelligence Lab, where he spent two years working on a paint system alongside AI luminaries John McCarthy and Ed Fagenbaum. According to Cohen, his early versions of Aaron before 1980 were able to differentiate between figure and ground and inside and outside, and to function in terms of similarity, division, and repetition. Over time, Aaron was able to produce drawings at a variety of scales, including a 100-foot-long mural that was featured at the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art in 1979. It wasn't until 1995 that Cohen was able to create a version of Aaron that could not only draw, but color as well. Aaron continued to transform over the years, though still only following procedural instructions. Cohen never came forward to say that Aaron was autonomous in any way. How much did it really matter that it couldn't make art on its own? Apparently, I couldn't make art on my own either. It's true that I could do things that Aaron couldn't, but then Aaron could do things that I couldn't. The real artist, the real agent behind all of this accumulated work was the combination of myself and the program. Another pioneer in this field was Lillian Schwartz, an American artist who was a member of the Experiments in Art and Technology Group, or EAT. This group's mission was to bring together artists and engineers as collaborators. She took classes in programming at New York City's The New School and began combining painting with digital collaging and computer and other image processing. Her works have included animations, special effects, and virtual reality. Schwartz's works have been featured in a variety of international galleries and museums, including New York's Museum of Modern Art and Paris's Grand Palais Museum. I just fell in love with the computer. I was taught machine language, which I thought was rather neat. I thought it was fine until Fortran came along, and I thought that was very hard. <laughs> I didn't want to have anything to do with it, and I missed the machine language. In both of these cases, concerning Cohen and Schwartz, it can be argued that the computer systems have less agency than the humans that program them. But the algorithmic procedures that have been produced in recent years have caused the line between program and artists to blur. Here is Ada 
the world's first ultra-realistic humanoid artist. She was designed by Engineered Arts, a Cornish robotics company, and was completed in April 2019. She is constructed with cameras for eyes and a robotic arm that is able to draw. Her algorithms were developed in collaboration with scientists at the University of Oxford, while her robotic arms and hands were developed by engineers at Leeds University. She is able to draw portraits through facial recognition technology that her robotic arm then maps on paper. For paintings, her drawings are fed into AI algorithms that interact with the Cartesian plane in order to create abstract works. In one sculpture credited to her, she first drew a real-life bee from a micro-CT scan before the drawing was fed into an algorithm that was later rendered by a scientist in Sweden and eventually 3D printed in wax and cast in bronze. In June of 2019, her artworks were featured for the first time in a gallery show at St. John's College. In a video posted on Ada's official website, it states, Art is also changing. I am the change. Who are you to say that you are the change? What gives you the right? <laughs> to what degree can we say that these artworks have been created by Ada and not the programmers and engineers? On AI art, Klingamon told BBC, the machine has no intent to create anything. You make a fire and it produces interesting shapes. But in the end, the fire isn't creative. It's you hallucinating shapes and seeing patterns. AI is a glorified campfire. Furthermore, the question of authorship is not totally new to the art world. Just look at Marcel Duchamp's infamous fountain. Is he the artist of this work? Or is he just some guy who put a urinal in an art gallery? Similarly to the obvious collective, the makers of Ada jumped the gun when contextualizing her work in the art world. In an interview with BBC, gallery owner Aidan Meller said that Ada was pioneering a new AI art movement. But once again, that is not quite the truth. The AI art movement has been alive and well for several years now. Unfortunately, people are only now starting to pay attention. In 2015, Mexico City-based artist Rafael Lozano Hemmer sold a software-based sculpture titled Synaptic Kagawamas for $118,750 at Philips. This kinetic sculpture, described as brilliantly absurd in the auction description, is arranged in the shape of a Mexican cantina bar with 30 Kagawama beer bottles whirling on top. They spin according to patterns generated by what the artist describes as cellular automata algorithms that simulate the neuronal connections in the brain. It is a tireless effort to allude to an algorithm's endless effort to find new permutations of movements without repetition. One year later, in March 2016, Joshua Toe, a design and UX lead for VR at Google, curated an art exhibit and auction at the San Francisco Gallery and Arts Foundation Gray Area. Titled Deep Dream, The Art of Neural Network, this show featured 10 artists and engineers, ranging from VR filmmaker Jessica Brillhart to Josh Nimoy. I sure would love to go into a deep dream right now. I am so fatigued. Kids? 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 Hello? 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 Kids? Kids? Hi, Edie Hody Ho. It's time for a riddle. I think I would rather be dead. It's time for a riddle. Please. You know what I always say, kids. If I solve your mystery, will you free me from this prison? If you defeat me, you will obtain the apple of Rogero. Can you say Rogero? I am no child. Please do not condescend. The beginning of eternity, the end of time and space, the beginning of every end, and the end of every place. Pardon? Can you repeat okay, that? Okay, kids. Per usual, there's a lot on the line today. Take your time to solve the riddle to get that apple. You have two whole minutes. But what is Google Deep Dream? Invented by Google engineer Alexander Mordvintsev, 
This computer vision program finds and enhances patterns and pictures to create psychedelic looking over-processed images. Whether or not you enjoy these nightmare-inducing works, it must be considered that Gray Area's Google Deep Dream show beat Obvious's portrait of Edmund de Bellamy to the punch when it came to being an early contender of AI art. Not everyone is in agreement, as some argue that Gray Area's show was just a non-profit benefit, not a sale at one of the big houses. Ah, uh, bias and elitism in the art world. What else is new? AI continued to enter the art market with a benefit auction in New York in 2017. ACAN, a program developed by Rutgers Art and AI Lab, was dubbed a nearly autonomous artist whose work titled St. George Killing the Dragon sold for upwards of $16,000. The scientists fed the algorithm 80,000 images that represent the Western art canon over the previous five centuries. The algorithm, called the Creative Adversarial Network, then judges each new work and attempts to create a new one while emulating a specific style. The program builds off of what already exists while attempting to be novel. In an interview with Fast Company, Ahmed El Gamal, the director of Rutgers Art and AI Lab and the founder and CEO of Art Rendex, said, The algorithm is fully at the helm when it comes to the elements and the principles of the art it generates. Because of this, he gave credit to the algorithm, ACAN, for each artwork. A year later, in April 2018, the Grand Palais Museum in Paris staged a show to examine the medium. The Artists and Robots show featured approximately 40 artists with a range of drawings, paintings, sculptures, and videos, each created using robots or algorithms, and many of which were immersive or interactive. In the exhibition description, it reads, these works contain a warning. Although artificial intelligence can help us, it also threatens to make itself our master by reducing humans to simple slaves to performance. Another mainstream show dedicated to AI-generated art occurred that same year, in August 2018, and approached AI in a different way. The Gradient Descent show brought together seven artists and occurred in Nature Morte, one of the largest contemporary commercial galleries in India. Unlike the marketing materials used by Obvious and the Grand Palais Museum's Artists and Robots show, gallery director Aparajita Jain wanted to avoid the idea that AI could replace human artists. Jain told Artnet, Our intent is not to say you're replaceable. Our intent is to stay with the times and ahead of the times. The more we fear something, the more we get controlled by it. If we understand it, we can use it as a tool. Well, which is it? Should I be afraid of our eventual robot overlords? Or should I be intrigued by this exceedingly exciting tool? Not only that, but should AI take full credit for the work produced? I don't know. Do you? Please check this box if you are not a machine. I don't trust you. Despite some news sources claiming that AI is a new medium or a terrifying turn for the art market, there are a wide variety of exciting artists who explore complex, social, economic, and cultural systems through the intersection of AI, algorithms, and technology. Consider Agnushka Courant, Ian Cheng, Tom White, Sophia Crespo, So Gwen Chung, Trevor Paglin, and collaborators Sun Yuan and Peng Yu. But who is the real artist behind these computer-generated, or dare I say it, computer-authored works? The question that vexes us to this day was considered as far back as 1965 by the Copyright Office. At the time, the Copyright Office considered how difficult questions of authorship were emerging due to the development and sophistication of computer technology. There was a case where the Copyright Office received an application for registration of a musical composition created by a computer. And there was another case where an abstract work was argued to be the work of a computer. There were no answers provided in the 1965 report, and still, I am hesitant to provide answers today. Nearly a decade after the Copyright Office's report, Congress created the National Commission on New Technological Uses of Copyrighted Works. In its final report, CONTU wrote, The Commission believes that there is no reasonable basis 
for considering that a computer in any way contributes authorship to a work produced through its use. The computer, like a camera or a typewriter, is an inert instrument, capable of functioning only when activated either directly or indirectly by a human. So, perhaps there are some who are confident in their disbelief that the cold, unfeeling metal robots and programming languages have no agency over the work that they produce. Perhaps they are right. Perhaps. But rather than be seen as a gimmick, AI continues to grow as a legitimate medium throughout the art market and a potential threat for the world. But did you know that you, too, can have art assistance from AI from the comforts of your own bone home? Consider Art Breeder, where you can combine multiple images into a creepy chimera-like work of art. Or maybe use AI Gahuku, a tool that can transform photos into beautiful Renaissance-esque masterpieces. With the vast proliferation of AI tools, will that eventually cheapen AI art as a gimmick? Will it instead inform us as to what makes a highly intriguing AI artwork? Or will the AI eventually take over the human race? And will we have nothing left but our shame? Our shame for not knowing what would occur ahead of time. I hope so. You have two whole minutes. Yes, we've covered this already. Well, kids, you know what I always say. Listen the first time, because I'm not repeating myself. How charitable of you. I'm so excited to hear your answers. There is no place I would rather be than playing baby games with you. Two, one. Okay, what's your answer? Remember, there's a lot riding on these kids. I found your hunk of junk earlier. I remember it vividly. I'm going to throw it in the trash where it belongs. Let me just ask you one question. A riddle of sorts. Do you feel pain? Another day, another dollar. I do not know what AI art will look like in the future or what questions we will continue to ask as our technology becomes more sophisticated and potentially autonomous. All I'm here to do is splain, and I hope to splain again in the future, hopefully with actual answers next time, but there's no promise of that. Thank you for watching the latest Art Splained episode. Please be sure to like this video, subscribe, and press the little bell thingy. We want to thank all of our patrons on Patreon. You are our lifeblood, and we cherish you every second of every minute of every day. Thank you, blood. Beep boop.